today in the game who understand this rivalry as well as anybody. Two Arkansas graduates. Both Arkansas graduates, some obvious similarities, but also some contrast. Fred Akers, of course, is an advocate of the multiple eye on offense and uh, a longtime advocate of the 4-3 defensively. Ken Hatfield is considered the architect of the flex bone offense, which is a variation of the wishbone. We're going to be talking a lot about that today. Defensively, he favors the 50 look, but expect the Hogs to be very multiple in their approach to defense today. We mentioned the delight of Arkansas to finally be favored in one of these classic shootouts. But really, when you look at Texas, they're a talented team. What do they have to do to engineer uh, an upset here this afternoon? I talked to Fred Akers about this yesterday, and uh, he was quite concerned. He said that basically two things would have to happen. He feels that they're going to have to be more effective with their passing game because they don't have the kind of dominating running attack that they have had in the past. The other thing he mentioned, turnovers. Arkansas has only allowed three turnovers in a total of five games. So Texas knows that they cannot give up the football. They're going to have to play high percentage football, perhaps the most complete football game of the 1985 season in order to win today. But forget about what the computer says in a game like this because this game is always a pick em game. Hogs and Longhurts can't read computers anyway. <laughs> that hog mania, by the way, has created a tremendous atmosphere here in Fayetteville this afternoon. But if that is not enough, we have a couple of freshmen, one on Arkansas, one on Texas, we think you're really going to enjoy. I think in James Rouse and Eric Metcalf, you have two of the premier freshman running backs in all of college football. And of course, since 1973, when freshmen burst upon the scene once again with the legalization of uh, freshmen in college football, we've seen some outstanding players such as Tony Dorsett, Earl Campbell, and of course, Her Herschel Walker in 1980 led Georgia to a national championship. So it's always exciting to see talented freshmen running back early on in their career. So look for Rouse and Metcalf to play an important role today. Cooper, you mentioned the offensive formations for both teams, and the thing that really strikes me is how strong Akers and Hatfield feel about their offensive formations. They won't differ very much from what they start out with. Absolutely. Uh, the wishbone and the flex bone will predominate for Arkansas. The multiple eye will be there for Texas. However, one thing that Fred Akers did intimate yesterday, he said that if Arkansas comes forward and really starts pressuring their quarterback with their 50 look, and particularly if the linebackers get into uh, uh, the, the secondary and start harassing the quarterbacks, one thing that we might look for would be a little variation. That means that he might bring out the run and shoot, which they practiced in the spring, and also a possibility of seeing the shotgun formation, which, believe it or not, they have practiced for nine years but have never used in actual competition. Well, we have more people in the stadium today than live in the city of Fayetteville. They've been coming from far around. Traffic was awful. The Longhorns did not arrive here at the stadium until about an hour ago. It took us about two hours to get here from the hotel, but it is certainly a day for where you decide uh, where you wear red or orange. Now we have, uh, of course, the coaches that we've mentioned. Ken Hatfield of the Arkansas Razorbacks and Fred Akers of the Texas Longhorns. Now Hatfield took part in one of the most exciting days in Arkansas history. We take you back now a few years and Hatfield was the man. It's a nice 47-yard punt. Kenny Hatfield plays it. And this is a scrambling thing at first and then the Arkansas blocker rolled out the red carpet. Hatfield rides again. 81 touchdown yards. Finally stride for stride with the official. And this makes it Arkansas 7, Texas nothing. And Arkansas was able to go on and win that game 14-13. Ken Hatfield downplays his role in that game, but remembers it well. And here come the Longhorns, their record at 3-1, led by their head coach, Fred Akers. They have beaten Missouri, Stanford, Rice, and last week the debacle against Oklahoma, where that Sooner defense was just too tough. They allow Texas only four first downs and pestered quarterback Todd Dodge all afternoon. Everything's bigger in Texas, including the band. They outnumber the Sooner, the Arkansas band by quite enough. And here come the Razorbacks. They're ready to go at Razorback Stadium. 53,000 are here. Glad you could join us. The kickoff is only moments away. A Saturday on ABC. CFA College Football. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by 
Chevrolet. It's 1986 at your Chevy dealers now. Drive today, Chevy. Live today, Chevy. By the U.S. Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. By GTE. We can do business with your business. And by GMAC, the financial services people from General Motors. The weatherman told us today that there was a 50% chance of rain anywhere in northwest Arkansas. And that certainly includes Razorback Stadium here in Fayetteville. Texas has gone with two quarterbacks. Todd Dodge, of course, seeing an awful lot of time. But Brett Stafford, number 10, will start today for the Longhorns as he has. Now, Arkansas won the toss and deferred to Texas, who will receive. Norman Nunn, number 25 for Texas, and number two, the speedster, Eric Metcalf, are back there. And, Kepper, we were saying yesterday how we expect to see a big run back of some kind here today. Well, you have return specialists on both sides. You've got uh, Bobby Joe Edmonds for uh, Arkansas. You've got Eric Metcalf, the sensational freshman that we talked about for the Longhorns. So we have speed on both sides. Now, the fact that they deferred to Texas and preferred to kick off here is some indication of the confidence that they have in their defensive unit. They rank third nationally in total defense to the Hawks. Kendall Trainer will kick off for Arkansas. Both coaches very happy at this point in their season with their kicking games. Deep into the end zone. Metcalf has it and downs it. Texas first and 10 at the Arkansas 20. They were hooting and hollering a few minutes ago with their hot calls. They are ready, and it'll be the Texas Longhorns on offense, Brett Stafford at quarterback, and some big guys to stand in front of him. Of course, he'll use his wide receivers frequently, Everett Gay and Gabriel Johnson. At times, he's a more consistent passer, Stafford, than Dodge. Eric Metcalf is wide right. Looks like a two-yard loss. Charles Hunter on the ball for Texas. Otis Lloyd making the tackle for Arkansas. And I think quite quickly, Lee, Texas has to wonder whether this could be the same nightmare they had against Oklahoma. What kind of defensive pressure can they get in comparison to the Sooners from Arkansas? They're going to get a lot of pressure. Arkansas, as I mentioned, one of the top teams in the nation, ranking nationally in total defense. 5-2 or 50 is their base look. There'll be multiple today. Nowhere again. Charles Hunter for the second consecutive time running and getting to the line of scrimmage. This time it was Calvin Williams, a junior from Greenville, Texas, coming in to make the tackle. On defense for Arkansas, some very, very talented players. Look especially for the nose guard, number 64, Tony Cherico, and David Bazell, the linebacker, number 53. And they've been hurt in the secondary by some key injuries. Filling in and absorbing some of the pressure, Kevin Wyatt, brothers, Lasker and Long. Third down and 10. And a whistle, flag on the play. Just underway, the first quarter under cloudy skies in Fayetteville, Arkansas. It's against Texas. Bad beginning for the Longhorns. This will take the ball to about the 15-yard line. Dead ball, false start on the offense. They third down. Fred Akers, the former Arkansas quarterback who played for our colleague Frank Royals, an all-purpose quarterback, as we saw during our pregame show. He's come back to haunt his former team with a record of 6-2. and two. Yep. Quarterbacks for Texas. Third down and 15. Stafford to pass. No. Looked like it was almost picked off. Intended for William Harris. Red Lasker, number three for Arkansas, was right there to break it up. Stafford rolling left. He's pressured once again by number 13, Calvin Williams. 
The intended target, the tight end, William Harris, number 95, broken up by number three, Greg Lasker, who is probably the best athlete in the secondary for the Hogs. You see the ball fairly well thrown, but Lasker there with perfect coverage. Lasker, uh, I have to say, a well-timed hit. Bobby Joe Edmonds for Arkansas, and he can break it. But he only gets up to the 47-yard line. Kelchick on the punt for Texas. And it will be Arkansas's ball on their own 47. And we'll see what their offense can do. So the strategy pays off. They now have opportunistic field position, 47 yards on the punt. No question about it, the color here in Fayetteville is red. Now, Coach Hatfield told us yesterday the first play from scrimmage will be a run inside. Let's test his integrity a little bit. Indeed it is. We'll have to believe him. As Arkansas takes it out to the 50-yard line, Marshall Foreman on the run. Greg Thomas is the talented sophomore quarterback from San Angelo, Texas. He was a rock-on. There is the exciting freshman, Rouse. We are sure that he will be piling up some yards today. Now, remember, they work out of the flex bone, so they'll have the... Three backs in the backfield. Donnie centers. He could be receiving a lot of passes today as well. So just shy of the 50-yard line now. Greg Thomas brings the Razorbacks to the line. And there's one of the problems at times with the flex bomb. Fumble recovered by Chris Doulibon. Doulibon hit Thomas as he was fanning out to the left-hand side, and we talked about it yesterday, with all those options and all that flexibility. Well, it's a high-risk offense at the line of scrimmage. Arkansas will keep the ball, and this is the offensive line. Not as big, perhaps, as Coach Hatfield would like. Andy Upchurch, one of the most talented in the Southwest Conference. They're not big, but they're quick. So it is third and ten. Arkansas keeps the ball. Thomas overthrowing Donnie Centers, perhaps a frequent target. Steve Llewellyn really putting the pressure on Greg Thomas. And so Arkansas goes nowhere. So far, good work by both defensive units. Not surprising, though. We knew that the defensive units were talented and that the quarterbacks would be pressured early on. Once again, freshman Eric Metcalf, this time receiving... The kick of Greg Horn. Horn can really put a foot to it. And this one will be down on the one. Leo Young for the Razorbacks. A 53-yard boot. Greg Horn. Texas is in trouble. Scoreless as the Razorbacks and Longhorns look like they're in for a tight afternoon. We'll be back. That thing works like a Chevy truck. But me and my buddies want to get away on a rough, tough expedition. What works for us is my rough, tough sport truck. Chevy S10 Maxi Cab. It's got room for all our survival gear. And more room inside than any compact pickup ever. So bring on the wild, bring on the mob. Ah, there's nothing like grumping it. Hey, if it doesn't fit my S10, it doesn't fit my life. Fit an S10 Maxi Cab pickup or blazer in your life with low 8.8% financing. Every now and then, I compete in front of the whole world. Other times, I'm just out to have a good time with my family and friends. Come on, you're up. That's why I got into bowling. Yeah, bowling. It's fun. Pretty good exercise. It's great. Best of all, you don't have to give a 10 to have a great time. All right. On the other hand, it doesn't hurt. It's it. So join the fun this weekend. On the tail end of the last play, I'll watch the heads up work of Theo Young, number 87, as he watches to make sure his momentum doesn't carry him into the end zone and knocks the ball backward. Good field position. Brett Stafford keeping the ball and going nowhere. Arkansas defense rated the best in the Southwest Conference. And so far, they have lived up to that building. 11.23 to go in the first quarter. Al Troutwick, Lee Gross Cup, and a cast of about 53,000 on hand with you today. 
It'll be second down and nine. Stafford certainly likes to gallop from the backfield. He has had a 74-yard touchdown run already. That was against Stanford. And he's had two touchdown runs already this season. Good all-run athlete, competed in both baseball and track, along with football, when he was in high school. They've got some of the end zone lights turned on now. Of course, this dark gray sky doesn't help the illumination here at the stadium. Stafford looked a little confused. Alvin Williams was ready to smack him at the line of scrimmage. And again, Texas unable to get the gears oiled on offense. Now, we'll watch it again. As we watch from the end zone, we can see how Arkansas is dominating along the front line, particularly number 13, Calvin Williams, is off to an impressive start as he forces his way into the backfield of Texas and once again breaks up the play. Now, a short while ago, we saw the beautiful punt of Greg Horn. Now we're going to see John Telchik. He had an 81-yard punt last week versus the Sooners. And this one's done some flying, too. At his own 35 is Bobby Joe Edmonds. And again, he gives Arkansas a very good field position. They started at the 47th last time, and now they're at the 49. A 58-yard kick for Texas. We'll be back. There is no score. Mr. Goodrench knows your car's engine is an inferno of heat and friction. 100, 200 piston strokes of engine wear per second. It needs the life-saving fluid that protects it right. GM could wrench motor oil. Takes the friction, takes the heat. It's everything General Motors asks for in a fine motor oil. Get it from Mr. Goodrench. No one knows your GM car better. No one. Manage. To handle or direct with skill. Rockwell International Management stimulates the work of its 120,000 employees, one in six a scientist or engineer. Their elegant solutions to customer needs make Rockwell a world leader. Rockwell International. Managing high technology for global markets. At St. Louis and Kansas City of the World Series, Herzog's troops are ready to roll. Greg says, bring them on. Game one coverage begins tonight on ABC. Busy thinking right now. One of the more prominent members of the class of 65 here at Arkansas, Ken Hatfield. An eight-year record of 38-35-2. and two. His second year at Arkansas. He came over from Air Force and brought a lot of assistant coaches with him. First and ten from their own 49. Arkansas. Greg Thomas, their quarterback. And he keeps. Across the 45, Ty Allert makes the stop for Texas. Allert's a big one, 6'3", 232. Ty Allert, the strong side linebacker, number 48, is one of the best linebackers Texas has had in a long time. And you can see why. He wards off a blocker there, pursues laterally, and then makes the tackle on Thomas. And Thomas is quite a story within a story himself. More to come on him. Allard, the leading tackler for Texas. Straight up the middle goes James Rouse. He knows what this rivalry is all about. He's from Little Rock, Arkansas. The only true freshman starting for the Razorbacks. Number 35, James Rouse. One of the most talented freshmen that they've ever had. We take a look at the defensive line for Texas. They are the number two rushing defensive team. Of course, if they have any kind of a slight weakness on defense, it's on the pass. And we'll get a chance to see today whether Greg Thomas can take advantage of that at all. Eight minutes, 58 seconds to go. First quarter. Waiting to hear some wilder suey calls from the crowd. Not much Marshall Foreman. A Texan playing for Arkansas. Can they ever forgive him? The tackle made by Steve Llewellyn. Foreman not big for a fullback, 193 pounds, but very quick.
And in the triple option, he has part one, the full back up the middle. Greg Thomas, we talked about the leading ball carrier on the team, has improved dramatically at the quarterback position and has gained 23 pounds since they first signed him, mostly muscle through weight training. And he's one of the better running quarterbacks they've had in a long time. Once again, it was Ty Allert on the stop, but that was after the damage had been done. I think everybody in the stadium went for that one. First down, Razorbacks. Good play action fake out of the flex bone. It appears that Foreman, number 32, has the ball on part one of the triple option, but actually it turns into a play action pass, and then a scramble play for nine yards by quarterback Greg Thomas. Here's Donnie Centers, Kepper. Donnie Centers on the outside got a real shot from number one, Eric Jeffries. Nine-yard scamper by Thomas. First and ten at the 30. He's going airborne. Looking. Touchdown, Arkansas. James Shybest. Oh, those great hands. This is good communication because they come with a similar play action fake and this time it's James Shebest, the wide receiver on the right running a corner pattern on Eric Jeffries number one who was in on the coverage the time before but then on a fly pattern. Greg Horn makes it seven and the Razorbacks strike first. Oh, Coach Hatfield couldn't say enough about those hands of Shebest and a 30 yard touchdown pass from Thomas. 7-0, Razorbacks in front of the Longhorns. Thinking of selling your home? Well, now may be the perfect time. Interest rates are at their lowest in years, and the Century 21 team has thousands of ready buyers. In fact, the Century 21 team sells more homes than any other. Want to sell your home? Call a Century 21 professional today and ask about a home market evaluation. Put number one to work for you. Call now and let a Century 21 professional help sell your home. While other full-size automobiles are shrinking, there remains an uncompromised American classic. Today's Chevrolet Caprice Classic Brome. Uncompromised V8 performance. Uncompromised smooth and quiet ride. Uncompromised room and luxury. Caprice Classic. Not the most expensive luxury car, but the most preferred. Accept no substitute. Drive today Chevy, live today Chevy. Caprice Classic. Next week on ABC, we may take you to the Big Eight. It's the Cornhuskers of Nebraska and the Buffaloes of Colorado. That will be in Lincoln. And a game that the people of West Virginia and Penn State feel as strongly about as they do here about Arkansas and Texas. Penn State and West Virginia. One of those games in your area next Saturday on ABC Sports. Of course, our producer, Peter Lasser, a graduate of the University of Colorado. 76. Circa 1976. Kelly Hayes, our spotter, started college there. I think Mork went there, too. All right. Kendall Trainer, number 22, will kick it off for Arkansas. She best. And Thomas connecting moments ago on a 30-yard touchdown pass. At the goal line, Norman Nunn. He's got speed. Breaks a tackle, but can't break a second. 22-yard line, first and 10 for Texas. Let's go back to West 67th Street. Here's Jim Lampley. Al Troutwig, this was the scene in Legion Field. Last play of the game, Alabama trailing Tennessee 16-14. Van Tiffen lined up to kick a 61-yard potential game winner for the Tide. It fell just short, and now Johnny Major's volunteers have beaten Ray Perkins Tide three years in a row. Combined margin, 10 points. Yours, Al. I wish we had some of that sunshine here in Fayetteville. Charles Hunter on the run. He gets out to the 30 and out of bounds. Stopped by Richard Brothers. Brothers, one of those people for Arkansas, Cupper, who's feeling a little bit of the pressure. Those two key players for Arkansas on defense out with injuries. 
Anderson and Caldwell out of there, so Brothers in, in a key role, and he may get tested early at his right cornerback position. You mentioned he is an outstanding athlete. Decathlon performer, as a matter of fact. Won it twice in Arkansas. Second and two. Good pickup that time by Hunter for Texas. And it looks like it'll be a first down. Hunter again. He has broken some long runs this year. 26 yards, 43 yards, 29 yards. Ground level look at tailback Charles Hunter, number 26. And you get a sense of his running style, the acceleration. He's got the wiggle and the wobble as he starts outside. Cuts back inside. He's hit by number 99, Rodney Beecham, one of the leading tacklers on the team and probably the best down lineman for the Hawks. 255 pounds and a former wrestler. If you tuned in to see Todd Dodge at quarterback, you'll have to wait. It is still Brett Stafford passing. Intercepted. Richard Brothers. Intended for William Harris, Stafford's favorite receiver, or one of his favorite receivers. And the Razorbacks have the ball. We said moments ago that they might test Richard Brothers early on because of his inexperience. However, this ball is not well thrown by Stafford. Harris is tall, but not that tall. The ball is overthrown by about two or three feet, and Richard Brothers, number nine, at his right cornerback position, is right there to make the interception. Also, here come the Hogs again, running up the middle to start off this series. Carl Miller. A senior from Pine Bluff, Arkansas. And there's Brother, who just had that interception, his first career interception for Arkansas. Ken Hatfield told us yesterday that he had a lot of confidence in this young man and was not the least bit afraid of starting him. Second down at four. Six minutes, 22 seconds to go. First quarter. Lots of traffic for James Rouse. Only the second start for Rouse. Well, he rushed for over 100 yards last week against Texas Tech, probably his best performance of the year. We watched those game films yesterday together, and we just kept shaking our heads at his performance and the performance of Shebest, who has already notched a touchdown in the game. Well, Kenny Hatfield feels that Shebest has as fine a pair of hands as any wide receiver in America. Out of the wishbone, third and five. Thomas will keep it. And just shy of the first down, Ty Aller and Eric Jeffries, number one of Texas, teaming up to stop the scampering quarterback. I guess in the history of Arkansas football, you would cite Shebest, Lance Allworth, and Chuck Dykus, probably the most effective wide receivers that they have ever had. Gary Anderson, of course, an outstanding receiver, but he coming out of the backfield. You want to go way, way back. There was a fellow named Jim Benton, who I liked a lot. Don't go too far back. <laughs> we showed you one of Dykus' successes earlier. He played in the big shootout of 69. Fourth and one, and Arkansas is going to go for it. An early gamble by Ken Hatfield. At Arkansas is 45. And a flag was dropped on the field. The layup game is called against Arkansas, so perhaps the strategy session to decide whether to go on fourth and one took too much time. And so now the decision for Arkansas is made for them. Another look at Hunter Greg Horn for Arkansas. Remember his last one was downed at the one-yard line. And again, Metcalf. Metcalf has come from the east, from Arlington, Virginia. And this is not a good kick at all. Off the side of his foot, and it looks like it'll be out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Of course, for the next two weeks, the most popular freeway in America will be Interstate 70. You'll know all about it. It's Kansas City and St. Louis. And another fabulous renewal of the World Series. It begins tonight on ABC at 8 Eastern Time. And of course, good luck to Al Michaels, Tim McCarver, Jim Palmer, the Cardinals and the Royals. The 82nd World Series begins tonight. My buddy Al Michaels can make that a limo series. <laughs> won't, won't be able to get many air miles. First and 10 from their own 36. Texas on the move. 
Eric Metcalf. Nick Miller for Arkansas made the tackle. Metcalf has scored two touchdowns, both of them on pass plays. Remember the running backs we're talking about so much, Metcalf and Rouse, both freshmen. Nowhere that time, it was Metcalf again. Arkansas still leading here 7 nothing. Let's go back to Jim Lampley in New York. We'll get to Jim Lampley later as we continue live from Razorback Stadium in Fayetteville. Crowd of 53,000 here. Charles Hunter out of the game for Texas. That's still Brett Stafford at quarterback. today Ricky Williams number 57 a sophomore from not too far away Little Rock made the tackle for Arkansas because of Basil and Miller Ricky Williams is not a starter but he could be a starter he's a very talented young linebacker one of the best they've had in a long time 23 tackles and three sacks already on the season fourth down and eight the kick for Texas by Don Telson Bobby Joe Edmonds is hammered at his own 20-yard line. Gerard Senegal making the stop for Texas. It is still Arkansas in front. It was a 38-yard kick. 7-0 the Hogs. Who says you can't have it all? Who says you can't be buttoned up? And down the earth, underneath it all. Who says you can't have super premium taste and a less filling beer? Michelob Light. Oh, yes, you can. Michelob Light. Oh, yes, you can. Michelob Light. Oh, yes, you can. Have it all. Sometimes getting car financing turns out to be one long hassle. What uh, kind of car did you have in mind? A Fiero. Oh, an Italian car. It's a Pontiac from General Motors. You know, Motors. they make Chevrolets, Oldsmobiles, Buicks, Cadillacs. GMC trucks. This is none of my business, but those are not Italian cars. Make it easy on yourself. Finance your car or truck right at your GM dealer with GMAC. You understand we do have to know what you want to do with all these cars. Nobody knows more about financing and leasing cars than GMAC. Undefeated fourth ranked Penn State tangles with West Virginia, or number six Nebraska combines with Colorado. CFA coverage begins with college football today, next Saturday. On display once again, leading 7 0, the wishbone, flexbone offense of Arkansas. Greg Thomas is the man. Couple of, we got to find out why Hatfield loves this so much and why it works so well for Arkansas. Rouse, the carrier, didn't get much. Well, Ken Hatfield says facetiously that the flex bone was divinely inspired. He says that everything of importance he has learned has come from the Bible, so the flex bone must be in there somewhere. But in all seriousness, the truth is that the, the flex bone came in 1981 when he was at the Air Force Academy. He, he lined up the halfbacks in a tight slot formation, and Hal Bateman, the sports information director, said, hey, it's more flexible, hence flex bone. Sammy Van Dyke in the backfield for Arkansas. Carl Miller goes outside, and he is hooked at the 31. Ty Alec tosses him into his own bench. Another look at number 48, strong side linebacker Ty Allard, the leading tackler on the team for the Longhorns, an All-American candidate, and I think someone who you'll see playing in the National Football League next season. You see how he moves laterally to the football and ropes Carl Miller along the sideline. They're supposed to do that to Longhorns and not have Longhorns do it to you. I got it. Third and two. to the 43 yard line first down for the Razorbacks you know looking back at that tackle by Ty Aller that's the third or fourth solo tackle that he has for himself already in the game 
Carl Miller running the misdirection play that we saw James Rouse run so effectively last week. And in the true wishbone, that has been one of their more effective plays. Miller now two carries for 18 yards. To simplify it, when the halfbacks line up in a tight slot, that's the flex bone. This is a true wishbone. And off and up the middle for a bunch is James Rouse. There's that lightning quickness. James Lott and Gerard Senegal coming up from the back to stop Rouse. James Rouse, quite a story. They have never had a freshman back this big run this fast. Now look at him. He's 6'2", 215 pounds. He has 4'5 speed in the 40-yard dash, and he is only a freshman. Major talent. Flex ball put in motion by Arkansas, and it looks like about six yards for Derek Thomas. Only 100 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Arkansas moving now. Freddie Childress really getting off the line. He is a 300-pounder, number 72 for Arkansas. The penalty is against the Horns. So Arkansas, a small team overall with two exceptions. A couple of big guards up near 300 pounds. On Stinton, number 66, and Childress, number 72, Freddie Akers. Trying to figure out a way to slow down these hogs. And this will take the ball all the way up to the 20-yard line. Akers, a 1960 graduate of Arkansas, in his ninth year in Texas. A few substitutions. Van Dyke brings in the play for Thomas. Theo Young is also in. He made that fabulous play to bury Texas in their own zone at the one-yard line on a punt earlier. First and ten. Chris Dulavon. Stopping Carl Miller. And Hatfield doesn't look too happy about it. Dulabon, the weak side linebacker, one of the reasons that the linebacker position is considered the strongest. He, along with Hager and Allard, give them a trio of outstanding linebackers in the 4-3 look defensively. That's something I mentioned at the top of the show that Fred Hagers has favored for many years. One of the few teams in Division 1A football that stick with the 4-3 concept. Second in the Southwest Conference in rushing defense, you saw Dulavon. He's one of the reasons for that flag, obviously, on the play. They were flying everywhere. And some of the Arkansas players look like they're slightly angry with each other. Got to keep up the concentration, and they did that with 55 seconds to go in the quarter. Usually you associate Texas football with dominating defensive tackles and defensive backs, that is not in evidence this year. Of course, they lost Tony DeGreat and Jerry Gray from last year. James Rouse will play Western Union for Arkansas. Greg Thomas has the play. It is second down and 18. Thomas keeping. Some great hands belong to Shebest. We saw that earlier, but that was really a tough catch to make. Tony Tillman, number 11, nearly got a pick on that play as he was trying to hit Shebest on a crossing pattern after the play action fake. In the wishbone offense, you won't see very many drop back passes at all. Almost everything will be sprint out or play action, usually after a fake to the fullback, which is part one of the triple option. Bobby Joe Edmonds brought in the play. Flex bone. James Shebest is wide left. Keep an eye on him. Thomas, trouble in the backfield. Chris Dulabon. And he may have hurt Thomas's right leg. Dulabon plays with speed and a lot of power as Thomas limps off the field. Let's see if we can see why. Fred Akers told me yesterday they would blitz their weak side linebacker frequently. And there comes Chris Dulabon, number 39, who gets after the ankle, trips up Greg Thomas. We'll get a further report on Thomas's condition. Longest field goal for Greg Horn is 48 yards. This one is long enough. No good. Wide to the near side. So Arkansas's lead remains 7-0 with only three seconds to go in the quarter. Let's go back to Jim Lampley in New York for this report.
Well, here, Al, is something of interest to fans of sixth-rated Arkansas. Fourth-ranked Penn State is now trailing with less than five minutes to go in the Carrier Dome. A McPherson to Siano touchdown pass for Syracuse of 45 yards has given the Orangemen a 20-17 lead in a game in which Penn State got only 92 yards offense in the first half and is in serious trouble. Back to you, Al. Okay, Jim, 48-yard attempt missed by Greg Horn. And so now it's Texas's turn. Brett Stafford still manning this Texas offense at quarterback Darren Norris scampers up to the 42 yard line Stafford trying to reestablish his confidence after that early interception in the game as the first quarter has expired here at Razorback Stadium in Fayetteville and for now those are the unhappy people here they're cheering for Texas it's 7-0 The Arkansas Razorbacks favored by nine, leading by one at the half here in Fayetteville over the Texas Longhorns. Of course, just north of here is Kansas City, Missouri. They're getting ready for the World Series tonight, the Royals and the Cardinals. Let's go back to the ABC Broadcast Center in New York. Jim Lampley has a report looking ahead to tonight's Game 1 of the World Series. We'll be going back to Fayetteville, Arkansas for more St. Louis in which the key confrontation may be between Cardinal starting pitcher John Tudor and George Brett, the big bat in the Kansas City lineup. This will be a different experience from 1980 for Brett. At that time, of course, he was suffering from hemorrhoids. But there's more to that in the difference between 1985 and five years ago. Well, I think back in 1980 when we uh, beat the Yankees three straight, it was like beat. Uh, it was just like winning the World Series. Uh, they had beat us in 76, 77, and 78. And to go to Yankee Stadium and get a, a big hit off Gossage and to propel us to our first World Series, it was like the World Series is anticlimactic, and uh, I think this time we know better. We just came from a 3-1 deficit from the Toronto Blue Jays, and the team is flying sky high right now, but we know the season's not over. We, we still know we have uh, to play the people right down the road, the St. Louis Cardinals, and we're not going to give up yet. We're going to keep on fighting. With no designated hitter in the lineup and Hal McRae not batting behind him, it may be easier than ever for the Cardinals to pitch around Brett in this series. But there will be some occasions when Cardinal pitchers will have to put the ball over the plate against him. And John Tudor talked to us about the problem of pitching to George Brett. You can't pitch George Brett any one way. He's a great hitter. You know, he's proven that over the years. And guys, if guys had, a we had one weakness, then guy wouldn't be hitting 300 every year and doing the things he's doing. So I just have to move the ball around the strike zone against George and, and hope he hits the ball at somebody. 7 o'clock Central Time, game one of the World Series tonight. Now let's go back to Fayetteville, Arkansas. The Texas band wrapping up their show here at halftime on the artificial surface at Razorback Stadium. And the Razorbacks lead the Longhorns 7-6. Two field goals for Texas and only one touchdown and three missed field goals by the Arkansas Razorbacks, who are currently ranked fifth in the nation. It would be an upset if Texas was to rally in the second half and beat Arkansas. They have been a big play team all season long. So, we continue our live coverage here. We will now pass it aside and return with more halftime activities after this information from our local station 7-6 the Arkansas good afternoon I'm Pat Comer it's been a soggy day so far in and around Austin as rains continue to swell creeks and low water crossings we are under a flood watch until at least five o'clock the airport reports an average of two inches of rain so far some residents along Shoal Creek had a scare this morning as water washed up into their yards. You may recall back in 1981, flooding there left six to eight feet of water in some of those homes. Military officials at Fort Hood are searching today for two National Guardsmen missing after an ambulance plunged into floodwaters there. The National Guard says two others were in the ambulance, were treated and released at Darnell Army Hospital at Fort Hood. Kerr County Sheriff's officers say volunteer firefighters are evacuating residents near the rain-swollen Guadalupe River. Campers are also being asked to leave Pedernales Falls State Park. And a ranger at Lyndon Johnson National Historical Park says the ranch is closed to public tours because of high water. A top official of Tracor Incorporated says Defense Department action to bar the company from receiving new government contracts should not affect its finances. An investigation has been launched into possibly defective products. Financing public education is the topic at a conference here in Austin today. Teachers, principals, and taxpayers from around the state gathered at Fullmore Junior High School to plan a budget program. They'll present their ideas at the meeting of the next legislature. In national news, President Reagan said today he's ready for open and frank talks with Soviet leader Gorbachev at next month's summit. But in his weekly radio talk, Reagan put the prospect of progress 
on Gorbachev's shoulders, saying success depends on Soviet willingness to address the real sources of tension in the world. And so far, so good for Anthony Mandia, the first man to be kept alive with the new Penn State artificial heart. Mandia was given the heart yesterday in a five-hour operation at the Hershey Medical Center in Pennsylvania. That's News Brief. Join us for the latest on the weather, news, and sports on the Action News Evening Report at 6. On the playing field, Arkansas leading 7-6. But the folks who bang the drums and toot the horns tell you the battle of the bands is almost as important as the battle on the field. Let's check in and see what Arkansas has got for us. Competition just about as close as the football game. 7-6, Arkansas in front. We will return with more halftime in a moment. This is certainly Hogtown. Some investors who thought oil was the only answer came up dry. They've seen that tying up all their money in banks isn't always in their best interest. And that following the takeover fad of the moment can lead to slim picking. More and more, the ambitious investor is following Prudential Bates. Six. They only won successful touchdown of the game, and that came out of the flexbone wishbone combination that Arkansas is trying to throw at Texas. And we really were looking forward to the sure hands of Jim Shebest, and we got a chance to take a look at it on display. Well, I like this call because they had come with the same play on a previous down, and it had failed. But Thomas this time makes a good fake. And the looks back outside for number 25, James Shebest, who is beating Eric Jeffries to the corner of the end zone. And the sure-handed wide receiver takes it, breaks the tackle there, and onto the end zone he goes. That made it seven zip. And uh, I guess with the exception of three missed field goals, it's been pretty much of a textbook game plan for both coaches because they've been able to do the things that they thought they could do. And we've had hard-hitting defense. It's been the type of close, intense football that characterizes this rivalry. Three misses for Arkansas as Lee just hinted, and of course two successful field goals. We have just a couple of seconds to talk about Texas and Arkansas. Any changes? I don't anticipate any radical departure from the initial game plan by either coach in the third quarter. In the fourth quarter, you might see Texas throwing a little bit more on first down and maybe experimenting if they, are, if they stay in a catch-up posture. Other than that, I think it's going to be very similar in the second half. 
All right, pep talks currently winding down in the two locker rooms. In a moment, Texas and Arkansas will return to the field here at Razorback Stadium, right? Number 23 for Texas is Jeff Ward. He will begin the second half of play with Arkansas leading 7-6. Now, we've mentioned the three missed field goals. Now, we should point out to clarify that, that they have come on Arkansas's last three possessions. And here we go, second half, Texas and Arkansas. Carl Miller, out to the 15, to the 20, and he's hauled down at the 22-yard line. It looked for a moment like he might break it further than that, but Gerard Senegal, number five for Texas, was able to pull over to that right side and haul him down. We'll watch this one again now. Carl Miller, number 30, on the return. Jukes by one man right there. And it's Gerald Senegal, number 5, who makes the tackle. 22-yard return there. 14.52. We're only eight seconds deep into the third quarter, and not much there for Arkansas. Marshall Foreman, the carry. Let's check in again with the Texas defense. Some big boys up there, and they were able to handle Arkansas pretty well in the second quarter but it took him a while to get used to that Arkansas offensive unit Arkansas moved up and down the field very very confidently through the first quarter Chris Dulabon second leading tackler on the team and he had his share in the first half along with Ty Allert number 48 Greg Thomas feeding James Rouse number 35 he's out to the 32 Cooper, we didn't see as much from the, the freshman running backs as we had expected to see. Let's look at the defensive backfield now for Texas. Eric Jeffries, John Hankey. We said this may be one of the weak links for the Longhorns, and they have been beaten, and beaten only once. Once for a touchdown, and I guess you could say another catch by Donnie Centers was another fabulous effort by Arkansas. So those two nicks in the Texas defensive backfield. Again, James Rouse. And he knocks helmets. I don't think he got an, a yard out. Again, Ty Allert, number 48. Ty Allert, one of the players we've been spotlighting and isolating on today, number 48, has been consistently making big plays for the Longhorns, and he is the leading tackler on the team. That time he trailed part three of the triple option and brought down the, uh, the pitch back. So Greg Horn's going to have to give it away. He does. Back for Texas, number two, Eric Metcalf on his own 27 to the 36 eight or nine yard return for number two Eric Metcalf Arkansas's defense boy Cooper I thought this unit had a fabulous first half Calvin Williams from Greenville defensive tackle Rodney Beecham they were in that backfield of Texas time and time again and on the ground they are certainly a formidable unit they are the number one defensive team the number one rushing stopper for the Southwest Conference. David Bazell, the senior from Panama City, Florida. His parents, by the way, took out a full-page ad in the program thanking the people of Fayetteville for making their son feel at home. And we're told that his folks made the trip to every single Arkansas home and away game to watch their son play. Penalty against Arkansas. And Ken Hatfield doesn't like it. The attendance, 53,212, a new record for Fayetteville thanks to the 10,000 seats that they've added. Well, to amplify on what you were just talking about, David Basil is a beach boy from Florida, but he's learned to feel very at home here in the Ozarks. From the beaches to the mountains. <laughs> With a tan. I think it was Rick Schaefer, the uh, sports information director at Arkansas, who said the first time that David Basil showed up on campus, he showed up in shorts and a t-shirt with a fabulous tan and the skies were overcast and raining like crazy and Basil said well I'm coming here anyway I don't mind the weather that is mine made up well this is going to hurt the Razorbacks for sure this one's going all the way back to the 19 yard line and we're going to kick it again Greg Horn oops sorry we're going back to the 9 yard line clipping on the kicking team still being fourth down 
flipping against Arkansas. That means Greg Horn is deep into his own end zone. The safety man for Texas. Horn does not get all of that one. At the 49, Metcalf sliding through and cannot get away from the pursuit of the special team of Arkansas. Otis Lloyd making the tackle for Arkansas. A 40-yard kick by Greg Horn. And the defensive backs for Arkansas. Richard Brothers, one of the people filling in. They've had some injuries back there. Greg Lasker, he's made some key stops in the backfield. A couple of big tackles. And Otis Lloyd rounding out that lineup. 13 minutes, 27 seconds to go in the third. And we'll see what Texas has for us here in the second half. We briefly saw Todd Dodge at the final stage of the first half, but it is now Brett Stafford who started at quarterback for Texas, and he'll set that eye formation in motion once again. Stafford. Oh, it looked like it would be no gain, but they get about five yards on the play. Edwin Simmons for Texas. We mentioned the multiple knee operations that he's had over the past two years. And there was a missed tackle there right at the line of scrimmage that allowed him to get that five yards. By Rodney Beecham, the defensive tackle, number 99, who doesn't miss often. Ordered 55-pound Rodney Beecham missing that tackle. And that makes it second and five. Man in motion was William Harris. And a first down for Edwin Simmons. Well, it would be poetic justice if Edwin Simmons came back and had a big day today here at Fayetteville. Because as you pointed out, it was two years ago that his injury problems all started. I think this really gives an indication of how close the first half was. The bottom line time of possession maybe is an amplification of what I just said. First and ten. Three yards for Edwin Simmons. There's no question, Jeffrey, Simmons is the kind of player you cheer for, really. I think if you have half a heart, no matter whether you're an Arkansas fan, a Texas fan, a, a Buckeye fan, or a Buffalo fan. Well, he was out of the mold of, say, an Eric Dickerson or a Herschel Walker, the kind of guy who came in as a freshman. You figured he was going to be an impact player right away because of his size, because of his speed, his strength, his all-around athletic ability. But this knee injury problem has really curtailed a great potential career. This time it's Jerome Johnson on the carry. He's pretty darn close to a first down. Simmons, by the way, five carries for 21 yards. Just to recap what we said earlier, he injured that knee on his first carry in the Arkansas game two years ago. Well, they placed the ball at the 26-yard line. That'll make it third and one. Let's see if Stafford... Keeps it on the ground and scampers for it himself. He's shown us some running ability during the season and today. Bumble. And Stafford pounces on it, but there's a flag. Edwin Simmons moving in the backfield, and then, of course, Stafford just dropped the ball. All kinds of confusion. Yeah, we had a false start by Simmons. A bad exchange there between Chilton and Stafford. As a result of that, there isn't much that Stafford can do except cover the football. It would have been an error if he had tried to pick it up there because he might have gotten hit and fumbled again. Hatfield saying, decline that one. Illegal motion on the offense. Decline. Fourth down. Now the Razorbacks give the ball to Texas on fourth down now. Declining the penalty with 11.15 to go on the third. You may hear some reactions from the crowd as they rattle off some final scores from college football games around the country. It's getting that time of year. Some big traditionals starting to come up week after week. Texas Wish going for it. And there was more movement on the line. And I don't think they got the first down anyway. Charles Hunter, the ball carrier. Tim McRae, number 81 of Texas, was moving. It is called against Texas. 
As you pointed out in the first half, Texas goes to the wishbone in goal line and short yardage situations. I think you pointed that out. All right, I'll take credit for it. But in goal line and short yardage situations, they go to the wishbone. And that time there was an obvious false start. And their timing has not been good in short yardage situations today. Fred Akers appears agitated and looks a little tired. You know, as you mentioned earlier, they had to commute from Fort Smith. This is a 49-yard field goal attempt for Jeff Ward. His longest ever, 52, versus SMU. It's good! Texas leads the game 9-7. Well, this may be a story of field goals made and field goals missed. The third consecutive chip shot by Ward. That was a beauty. Texas is now leading by two. We'll be back. Quarter, 10-20 remaining. Texas has jumped in front with their third field goal of the game by a score of 9-7. to seven. And here's the man who has done it three times through the uprights, Jeff Ward. He will kick off to number 30, Carl Miller. Jeff Ward from Austin, Texas. That wasn't a big move for him to go to school. Ward's been kicking him pretty deep. And this one's no different. And that'll come out to the 20-yard line. Texas leading by two. Let's go back to Jim Lampley in New York. It is halftime now in Iowa City. The Hawkeyes got a 27-yard field goal from Houtland on the last play of the first half to pull to within 7-6, Michigan leading. Key stat in the first half, long. 12 of 18 for 156 yards. No interceptions against the Wolverine defense, which had intercepted 14 passes on the season coming into the game. We'll keep you posted. Al? Hey, Jim, of course, we had a chance to see Chuck Long perform in that big win by Iowa over Iowa State a couple of weeks ago. So a tight one there and a tight one here. Greg Thomas hands it off for James Rouse, and he gets a handful. Out to the 25-yard line. Out of the wishbone, that misdirection play, the counter or the misdirection, has been Rouse's favorite play. We saw him score on that, watching film yesterday in the ball game against Texas Tech. Little fake to the fullback, then the hand to the crossing back, Rouse. We mentioned they have never had a freshman come in here with this much talent in terms of size, speed, and power. The handoff to Carl Miller, who brought that play in from the sidelines. Two yards short of the first down. Be with us tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 Central, where they'll be rocking in Kansas City. The Cardinals and the Royals begin the 82nd World Series. It'll be on ABC Sports tonight. Show Me Series begins. Third down and one. That looks like a first down. Derek Thomas, the ball carrier. And it is a first and ten conversion for Arkansas. This town completely consumed by this game. There are literally hundreds of campers that began pulling into Fayetteville on Wednesday. They had a huge pep rally on Thursday night in the parking lot that is completely full with cars today. And the banners are simply everywhere. Every restaurant, every hotel, every store saying, let's go Hobbs. Another short run by Arkansas, Derek Thomas. There's the campground, Pepper. And that may have been a better idea in comparison to the hotel we had two hours away. Little commute from Fort Smith. Well, as my old colleague Chris Schenkel used to say, it's all part of the color and the pageantry of college football. And what better way to spend an autumn afternoon? The colors here are red and orange. And right now the orange of Texas lead by two. Thomas back to pass, and he's hauled down in the backfield. Ty Allert with another defensive gem. He has been the standout for Texas's defense in the game so far. Watch again number 48, one of the premier linebackers in the Southwest Conference and possibly in the entire country as he comes from his linebacker position and really gets into the quarterback there. That's Ty Allert, number 48. 
and gets into James Rouse, I should say. And having 30 pounds on Rouse, Aller had no trouble in just tossing him aside. Third and 13. Thomas is going to scamper and get nowhere. Blake Browner in on the tackle, and even the speed of Thomas was not enough. And again, Greg Thomas limps to the sidelines. He got knocked up a little bit in the first half. We saw him limp off. When you look at Thomas there, he doesn't look like a quarterback. He looks like a fullback or a halfback, physically. Greg Horn on the punt for Arkansas. That's a disappointing series for him. This is a pretty good kick. Eric Metcalf. He'll bring it right up the middle. And a flag on the play, a six-yard run back, or thereabouts, for Metcalf. And we'll sort out the flag and see what's going on here at Razorback Stadium with Texas surprising Arkansas by two. The flag at the 41. Here we have the tail of two kickers, Al, and really the difference in the football game right now. Jeff Ward is three for three kicking. He has made field goals of 34, 33, and 49. Greg Horn, conversely, 0 for 3, has missed at 48, 40, and 33. That's the difference in the football game. Some sweaty palms in the skyboxes on either side of us here at Razorback Stadium. There was a clipping penalty against Texas on the punt. That pushed the ball all the way back, but now Brett Stafford gets a pass out to William Harris. One of the big targets for the Longhorns. Oh, did Stafford make something out of nothing? That might be one of the more important individual efforts of the day as Brett Stafford got away from Carl Bradford, number 43. Bradford disappointed because it looked momentarily that he had Stafford stop completely keep your eye on number 43 Bradford here he is he has Stafford wrapped up seemingly right there could have blown a whistle possibly turns it into a 22 yard game well, I'll tell you something Jerome Johnson number 35 may have saved that play with that block at the last minute in the backfield and running and running far is Edwin Simmons well, if you're looking for an unlikely... Two, one, go. Yard on that carry on the power pitch around the left side. Point of sign, we're having some video problems, but we'll do some radio for you. Ball on the 41-yard line. One setback for Texas. Stafford rolling left. Oh, was a good fake. Handoff good for three yards. Six minutes now remaining in the third quarter. Jerome Johnson was the ball carrier. And that'll make it second and six. Al Trowick along with Lee Gross Cup. We are live at Razorback Stadium. So in the third quarter, Texas down 7-zip early on and dominated in the third quarter is beginning to take charge of the football game. Slowly, Stafford steps up to the line of scrimmage. Now back to the eye formation. Texas in white at the 37-yard line. Stafford back to pass, looking long. He's got a man at the three-yard line. It's broken up at the last minute. A great defensive play for Arkansas. Charles Washington intercepting momentarily the pass intended for Everett Gay, but then the ball bounced free. A close call for Arkansas at the three-yard line. Washington ran a deep post pattern. Stafford looked momentarily that he had a touchdown pass. Then Washington stepped in. It looked momentarily like an interception. But it turns into a regular incompletion. So we have third and what would normally be considered an obvious pass situation. But when you have a scrambling quarterback like Stafford, the run, the threat of the run is always there. Pictures back on. The Razorbacks get him. Did they get the ball? They think they have it. Steve Atwater hits Stafford in the backfield. It doesn't look like the Hawks will get what they want. But a good play nonetheless. On the previous play, we had a long pass. This is while we were away. Everett Gay and Russell Hayes running a combination pattern. It's Everett Gay, number 19, running a deep post pattern. Gets momentarily behind Washington, number four, but it's broken up. Cooper on the replay, it wasn't even close to an interception. I thought when I watched it live that 
it came pretty close to winding up in the hands of the Arkansas defender. We have a timeout on the field, 9-7. The Longhorns leading by two. We're in the third quarter in Fayetteville. We'll be back. We are moments away from watching the lone offensive star for Texas go for his best effort ever. Jeff Ward has connected three times. His best ever, not in this game, 52 yards. This is a 55-yard attempt in an effort to give Texas a five-point lead. It looks long enough. It's good! Jeff Ford from 55 yards, and this game continues to be a story of field goals made and missed. So it is Texas 12 and Arkansas 7. The Longhorns are thinking upset in Fayetteville. The folks here in Fayetteville want to wake up the Hogs. It's Texas 12 to 7. The hero for the Longhorns is Jeff Ward, who moments ago kicked this one from 55 yards. Watch the coach's son, Danny Akers, the holder, the minute this ball is kicked. He knew right away. That's his reaction. And it's very positive as Jeff Ward having one of the dream days of his career, Greg Horn conversely having, as we said before, a kicker's nightmare. And here's Ward again, the son of an NFL official. And a guy who used to think soccer was it. And again, he boots it right to the edge of the end zone, and that will give Arkansas the ball at the 20. Ward has now tied a school record for most field goals made in a single game, equaling the mark set previously by Russell Erksleben. Erksleben had a four field goal day against TCU back in 1978. And also, Raul Alegre against Texas Tech. And John Goodson also. So with 4.45 to go in the third, let's see if Arkansas can wake themselves up. Certainly this crowd is louder than they've been in quite some time. Thomas out of the wishbone. Keeps. He's got 10. Out to near the 40-yard line. I think he would have gotten a lot more than that had it not been for Tony Griffin. This is textbook bone. Watch, part one, part two, the quarterback sees it right there, Thomas. And the trailing back is perfectly spaced. And you see some of the athletic ability of quarterback Greg Thomas there. A lot of speed by Tony Griffin, number 16 of Texas. Came Donnie up Centers, number one, comes back on a crackback block. Back live. Carl Miller couldn't stay on his feet. Got a couple. Thomas picked up 17 yards on that last option play, and that means that for the day, he's 13 carries for 31 yards. He came into today's game as the leading ball carrier on the team. But that's not uncommon for a quarterback in the wishbone or flexbone attack to be the leading ball carrier. Donnie Centers, number one. Talented receiver, checks in for Arkansas. And he'll be split wide to the right. Still in the wishbone, Razorback, second and 11. Bad news for Greg Thomas. Back January, doing it in October. And this will be the next play coming in from the sidelines. Coach Ken Hatfield sending in number 25, James Shebest. Ooh, the Nittany Lions got lucky, and the Orange Men were almost famous today. Another final, West Virginia over Boston College, 13-6. Nebraska over Missouri, 28-20. Colorado over Iowa State. Third and 14. Incomplete. Intended for Donnie Centers. Mike January was right around his waist. Nebraska and Penn State both had to rally in those games, and as a result of that, you will see Penn State going against Virginia next week and Nebraska against Colorado. I remember watching West Virginia, Penn State last year, the people of West Virginia and of State College. Boy, they get serious about that one. And they're pretty serious right here in Fayetteville because the Razorbacks trail by five. Texas with the ball. Look out. 
What coverage by Arkansas on the kick. Number 49 was the man who flipped the receiver. Reggie Hall was the one who got down there. It was Eric Metcalf, number two. He's only 5'9", 178. Boy, he got flipped. Donnie centers on the third down play that we just saw. Comes close to making the catch. But he was well covered that time by Mike January, number 28. Flipping against Texas on the punt. And so that'll push them all the way back to the oh, eight and a half yard line. The emotional energy is so strong here in this stadium that you can almost feel the momentum beginning to change back in favor of the Razorbacks. We felt it in the first quarter. For a while, Texas began to move the football, and you felt that they were in charge of the game. Now it seems to be going in the other direction. One thing about the Longhorns, they're used to big games. They're used to pressure. They have a way of letting the hype roll by and simply going to work. Texas still going with Brett Stafford. Pitch out to Jerome Johnson. No, check it. Edwin Simmons is the ball carrier. Hard to miss that big hoss. Number 33, Edwin Simmons, 6'4", 230 pounds. Has the size, the speed, the strength you like. Had it not been for those knee injuries, I think right now he would have already established himself as one of the premier backs in college football. As we look at Todd Dodge, the senior quarterback, who has been used to the role of tandem quarterback throughout his career. He told me yesterday he doesn't worry about it. He says, I'm always ready. He's taken some heat in his role at quarterback at Texas. And the Longhorns now get it out to the 30-yard line. Edwin Simmons again. Kepper, yesterday you and I tried to figure out why this game is as important as, as it is. We spoke about the big shootout, of course, the game in, in 81. But a lot of people said, you know, Texas is bigger. They have better highways. They have the oil and the farms. And this is the one chance for Arkansas to punch Texas right in the stomach. Get him where it hurts. In football in the Southwest Conference. Edwin Simmons, his numbers reflected there. Eight carries, 56 yards. He picked up nine on the last carry. Texas still in the eye. Eric Metcalf. And he gets about five out to the 35-yard line. Eric Metcalf, the sensational freshman, not a factor so far today, but a player with great potential. He, of course, the son of Terry Metcalf, formerly of the St. Louis Cardinals, played some in the Canadian Football League, wound up his career with the Washington Redskins. Metcalf an All-American when he played at Long Beach State, now known as Cal State Long Beach. But Eric Metcalf, 17 years old, the son of Terry, is a player with tremendous potential. It's in the blood. Stafford rolling. He's got a man who is hammered at the 49-yard line. Gabriel Johnson, number 31, but another completion for Stafford. High clothesline type tackle by number seven, Kevin Wyatt on Johnson along the sideline. Sprint out action here by Stafford. And he's looking for number 31, Gabriel Johnson, the wide receiver along the right sideline. Now watch this high, hard, closed line tackle. That's a little controversial. That's something that you could drop the flag on. Well, that gives Texas first and ten. And for the first time today and in the past couple of days, the sun is shining in northwest Arkansas. Stafford scrambling. Heavy pursuit by the Hogs. But a completion at the 41. Gabriel Johnson again. David Dudley was there, but it was too late. The pass had been caught. Stafford with his scrambling ability again coming up with big plays as we look at David Basil and Ricky Williams pressuring the quarterback. But look at the movement here. We talked about his athletic ability. A track and baseball player in high school along with football is Stafford. Stafford now 8 for 12, 108 yards. He's back again. For Darren Norris. David Dudley, who made the stop on the previous play on the pass, 
makes that stop on Darren Norris, and there will be no gain at all for Texas. Good reaction there by Dudley as he set up the swarm of Arkansas defenders. Remember, Texas lost to Oklahoma last week, 14-7. Key third down situation right now for the Longhorns as the play comes in from the sideline. This is one of those times in the football game where if they keep the drive going, it could turn it for the Horns. If they stop it, it could be conversely for the Razorbacks. And it became a game of beat the clock. The clock shows no time remaining. But Stafford had turned around before the clock had expired. A moment of confusion here. I was saying that Texas had lost to Oklahoma last week 14-7, only got four first downs. But we remember that they haven't lost back-to-back -to, -back to Arkansas and Oklahoma in 14 years. We'll have this commercial message and a word from our local station. Snoozing through it all is Big Red Six. And we remind you, danger, do not pet. The mascot of the Razorbacks, Texas begins the fourth quarter. Leading 12 to 7. And now Troutwick with Lee Gross Cup. Here's Stafford airborne again. He's got his man. It's William Harris. And Harris is down to the 12-yard line. Suddenly now, it is all coming together for the Longhorns, who haven't scored a touchdown in seven consecutive quarters, are now moving the football. Stafford's passes have not always been an artistic success today, but he is getting the job done consistently, this time moving to his left, looking for his big tight end, William Harris, number 95, who catches the ball in front of Kevin Wyatt, number 7, for a big play, and that's something he did consistently in 1984. Remember we said earlier that he's been slowed down this year by a painful hamstring injury. He's regaining his form of 1984. Well, Harris had to come back and get that ball. I think if he was led a little bit more, he could have been in the end zone. It was Edwin Simmons jumping over one tackle, and he's down to the 10-yard line. Another advantage that Harris had over Kevin Wyatt, who hauled him down, was height. I mean, we're talking a lot of height. He's 6'5", Harris, and Wyatt is only 5'10". I'd say there's a height advantage. Yeah. Doesn't take a 5 beta Kappa to figure that one out. And I'm glad, because I don't think there are any in the booth today. We'll look over here. Ball on the 10. It's second and eight. Stafford for Edwin Simmons, and he is continuing to emerge. And I see dejection somewhere underneath that helmet, Cooper. I think he wanted that touchdown, and he wanted it bad. He had a shot at the end zone, and I think that maybe if he had hesitated a little bit longer, ran a little bit more under control, and then made his cut, as we look at his numbers reflected right there, 10 carries now for 64 yards. I think you're right. I think he could have had a touchdown if he had hesitated a little longer and then cut a little more sharply to his right. There was daylight. On the five, early in the fourth quarter, Stafford slips. He's not getting away from David Basil. The senior from Panama City wanted to thank the folks of Fayetteville from making him welcome. Well, the folks of Fayetteville would like to thank him right now. Keep your eye on number 53, David Basil, right here as he comes up with one of the clutch plays of the day defensively for the Hawks. 41 tackles and three sacks at Basil coming into today's game. Well, guess what? Texas is going to go for their fifth field goal of the game. Which this would be a record. Yes. 35 yards. And Jeff Ward is perfect on the day. Texas's lead is now 15 to 7. And what that means is that it's bigger than a touchdown for Arkansas. 13 minutes, 2 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. 15 to 7. Power coverage. Jeff Ward's got to feel great. 15 points for Texas, and he's scored them all. He has a 55-yard field goal in the game so far, his longest ever, and he has set a Texas record for most field goals in a game with five. At the goal line, Carl Miller. Miller to the 20. And then he's hauled down at the 23. 
With that fifth field goal, he surpasses the record previously held by Erksleben, Goodson, and Allegre. So Fred Akers, the coach of Texas, is now riding on the foot of Jeff Ward, but he knows what that's all about. We take you back to 1959, and Fred Akers is the field goal kicker for Arkansas. It's up, and it's good, and they would be the only points scored in the game as Arkansas beats TCU 3-0 happened right here in Fayetteville. Great memories. He's thinking about Jeff Ward's foot right now. Brett Stafford Humble. lost the ball, and I don't think Texas had it. He got it back. Thomas got his own fumble right back. He really got a shot, though, from Mark Petrovich. Petkovich, number 41. Petkovic, a big steer. 6'3", 232. Ball at the 24. Oh, boy. And the bad news continues for the Razorbacks. In the first half, it was the Arkansas defense that was inspired. But now suddenly, perhaps turned on by Jeff Ward's performance, it is the Texas defense that is coming on. Perfect timing by number 97, Thomas Aldridge. As Thomas is trying to get to part two of the triple option, and he can't do anything with it. Five for five, and there are the numbers. We've got a change at quarterback. Mark Calcagni is in, the senior from Youngstown, Ohio. So a change by Ken Hatfield, who is a, a lover of Greg Thomas. And look at this, Calcagni makes his presence felt immediately. Bobby Joe Edmonds on the receiving end, and that's a first down and a critical one. Well, Cal Cagney knows how to win. He was here in 81 when Arkansas upset Texas. Of course, he is the brother of Ron Cal Cagney, who was an outstanding quarterback for the Hogs in the late 70s. His numbers reflected right there coming into today's game. A 17-yard pass cover, and the third time he has completed his first pass on the first play of his appearance in the game. And this time it's Carl Miller. He gets out to the 42, about halfway to another first down. You may remember the fabulous Razorback team of 1978. That was the year Lou Holtz and company were on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Well, Mark Calcagney's brother was one of the Razorbacks featured that day. And so there's a Razorback tradition in that Calcagney family. So, Greg Thomas is out. And Mark Calcagney, who dislocated his shoulder in summer practice, is making his way back in. This time the handoff to Bobby Joe Edmonds. Just past the marker, first down, Razorbacks with 11.02 to go. And with what we think is the sun shining, it is beginning to rain here in Fayetteville. Well, this is the 50% of the day we thought we were going to avoid. There was a 50% chance of rain anywhere in the state of Arkansas today. Don't you love that forecast? I mean, you can't get away. Yeah. Which means there's also a 50% chance of sun anywhere in the state of Arkansas. And the handoff gets a couple for Sammy Van Dyke. Another member of the Arkansas Razorbacks who's from Texas. He's a sophomore from Dallas. Mark Cagney in for Greg Thomas and guiding this wishbone flexbone of Arkansas you remember back to 1969 the big shootout we showed you at the top of the show that fabulous game played here in Fayetteville it was in the rain and it was a day like this the only difference was the month that was December and this isn't there was a lot more on the line that day Texas had 15 points to win it the term big shootout has really become kind of a cliche in college football, but that was the big shootout. Texas won that one with 15 points, and they won it by a point. And we have the potential for a similar situation today. Texas leading 15 seconds, 15-7. Third down and two. Wishbone again for the Razorbacks. Bobby Joe Edmonds. I think he's got it. He does. He does have it. Good call. A 
Edmonds showing us what he can do with the football, and he'll be watching tonight as the World Series debuts on ABC. He was twice drafted to play baseball by the St. Louis Cardinals. The football was a little bit more important, at least when he had to make his decision. And here he is today trying to get the Razorbacks back into this one. They trail by eight. First and ten. Cal Cagney. Wide open is Theo Young. Down to the 20-yard line. That's a good call and good execution by Cal Cagney. All the flow goes to the left. He bootlegs to his right, and his tight end, number 87, Theo Young, is all alone along the right sideline before Tony Hillman, Tillman, number 11, comes up to make the tackle. 18 yards, Cal Cagney now two for two passing for 35 yards, 36 yards make it. This Hatfield looked brilliant to make the quarterback switch, doesn't he? Right up the middle, James Brown. Number 35 on his favorite misdirection play off the left side. Makes a great cut right here. Then comes back to his right, and you see some of that 4-5 speed as he runs away from everybody in the secondary and takes it on into the end zone. We have the kind of shootout here we thought we would have. Cal Cagney going for two. No. And Texas now leads 15-13. The pass intended for Bobby Joe Edmonds, broken up beautifully by John Hagee. But still, Arkansas and everybody here knows a field goal could still do it. James Rouse, the freshman, has 65 yards on the day. That was a 20-yard touchdown pass. Play action fake with a roll to the right and a throw back to the left. He's trying to get the ball to number 41, Bobby Joe Edmonds, who's on a deep swing pattern. And it's John Peggy, number 17, there on the coverage. So Arkansas comes back. They want these fans with more noise behind them. 9.02 to go in the fourth quarter. It's a tight one here at Fanville. The kind of close, competitive game that has characterized this series. I mentioned at the top of the show that in terms of its overall numbers, it's been a lopsided series, but that's very misleading because the games themselves have always been close, competitive, very emotionally packed. Remember, you know, we're to the point now where Arkansas trails by two. They know how important a field goal is, but now we remind everybody but that's where they failed the most in this game. They may need a field goal, which they haven't been able to get today. They're 0 for 3. Greg Horn could redeem himself with one kick. Kendall Trainer, kick it off for the Razorbacks. Kick goes to Norman Nunn, number 25. Fans think he stepped out of bounds. But the officials don't think so, but it matters not. Nunn only gets out to the 12-yard line. But it's not a good decision to try to run that one out. Watch his right foot. Let's see if the right foot goes out of bounds in the end zone. He gets very close to the boundary. He's in the end zone. He's close to the boundary. No. No. Yes. Yes, his right foot is on the line right there. That should come out to the 20-yard line. The official was obviously four feet from the play. It looked like the turf was a little bit slippery. As we've mentioned, we had a, just a little drizzle for a few minutes. Matters to Ken Hatfield, not at all. An impressive drive for Cal Cagney. When he entered the game, he moved the team 77 yards in 10 plays. It took up four minutes on the clock, and it was culminated with a great run by James Rouse, the scintillating freshman, a former Parade All-American who has a great future in college football. That's the type of back who could be a Heisman Trophy candidate by his junior or his senior year. He has the tools. Well, remember all that talk we just had about whether out of bounds or not? It doesn't matter. Arkansas was offside on the kick and they'll do it again. From the 35, Kendall Trainer. 
So that's a big break for Texas because they would have been caught back inside their own 20-yard line. Just under nine minutes now in the fourth quarter. This time it's Metcalf, number two. Metcalf to the 20. Almost broke that last tackle, which would have been a big gain, but he still gets out to the 30. Steve Atwater was the one who finally slowed that quick 5'9 freshman from Arlington, Virginia, Eric Metcalf. Oh boy, big news out of Norman, Oklahoma. 27-14, Miami leading second rank, Oklahoma. Wonder what kind of a day Vinny Testaverde is having throwing against the Sooners. That's where they might have been vulnerable. Miami doing what Texas couldn't do last week. Edwin Simmons goes nowhere. Beecham and Miller, what a tandem. Kemper, before you mentioned the change in the atmosphere here, you really can feel it. Felt it late in the third quarter. And Cal Cagney probably standing on the sidelines got a chance to absorb all those, those hard calls and came out and really was the magnificent engineer of that scoring drive. Second and 11, Longhorns lost one. Brett Stafford on the ball. the man we wanted so much to be the hero of this game Edwin Simmons was the man who fumbled the ball watch number 99 right here strip the football that's Beecham it looked momentarily like the Razorbacks had the football I thought brothers had it but Texas got it back so Simmons now, 12 carries, 71 yards. Brothers apparently injured on the play. And that's even more bad news for the defense of Arkansas because Brothers is out and now Charles Washington is infilling it for him. So they're down to the third different man in that position, at least that they expected for Arkansas right now. Edwin Simmons again. So a record crowd is seeing a great game, the kind of game we forecast at the very top of the show. I thought it was unrealistic to fave, favor Arkansas by nearly 10 points in this game. I felt right along it was a pick em game. in what would normally be an obvious pass situation, but with the time element, it's hard to tell what they will do. Actually, it could be a run or pass situation. Again, it's Edwin Simmons. His ankles tied at the 45. Tony Cherico. Big sophomore from Shawnee Mission, Kansas, was the one who grabbed him around the ankles. He, known as the snake charmer of Fayetteville, kept a pet python in the dorm last year, was requested by his coach to get rid of the snake. And Hatfield doesn't like snakes too much. Apparently the python is somewhere in Fayetteville, but no one knows where. So if you're watching ABC in Fayetteville today, just uh, go out and check out your backyard just to be safe. It is 15-13, Texas over Arkansas. We've got six minutes and six seconds to go, and those should be very interesting to watch. 
And I know that Cupper and I will be among the millions who watch that World Series tonight on ABC. Once again, Cards and Royals, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Ball on the 47. Eric Metcalf in the backfield now for Texas. And he takes the toss from, oh, we've got a little razzle-dazzle from Metcalf. And it's just broken up at the last moment by Greg Lasker, number three of Arkansas. Eric Metcalf on the halfback pass here does a good job of setting it up. It appears to be run. Then he looks down. He's under pressure, though. It's questionable that he should have thrown the ball. He was trying to get the ball to Johnson, number 31, his wide receiver. Perfect timing by Greg Lasker, number three, who comes along and swats the ball away with his left hand. See that? And he avoids the contact. Perfect defense. Well, that play shuts down Texas and their drive. Telchik on the punt. Bobby Joe Edmonds gets it out to the 27-28 yard line. Arkansas will have the ball. And that's the first time that Texas has had to punt the ball away since the first quarter. Is the tide changing in the Arkansas River? Does missing three field goals and hurting your team's offensive performance affect your confidence and your performance? We may find out. Here's Greg Horn, 0 for 3 so far. And we've got Cal Cagney back and controlling the Razorbacks again. James Rouse on the run. He was the one who ran for the touchdown to give Arkansas their last six points. A word about Cal Cagney. This really has got to be a, a day for him not to believe. He follows his brother from Ohio right here to Arkansas to play for the Razorbacks. Doesn't play very much. As a matter of fact, before this game, he only had nine career pass attempts. But what does he do? He comes in here, connects on his first, connects on a few more, and Arkansas scores a touchdown for the first time in a long time. Here we are, second and seven. Fumble! I think Texas has got it. Derek Thomas, number 40, should be the one on the bottom of that pile holding the pigskin. Oh, no. It belongs to Texas. And in great field position, Don Hagee, number 17, will somehow wind up with this fumble. Fumble by number 40, Derek Thomas, as the ball is stripped right there. And along comes John Hagee, number 17, to cover the ball for Texas. For Texas, there is John Hagee. And he's, there's the man who gave the ball away to him. He's the one that broke up the two-point conversion earlier. Well, the defensive turnaround, and this could be a big turnaround for the Longhorns. Ball on the 32-yard line. Simmons runs into a wall. Said at the very top of the show that Texas, to pull an upset today, must negate turnovers. Teams are equal in that department. One turnover for Arkansas, one turnover for the Horns. We've had a close fought, intense, emotional game, relatively error-free today. Remember, I mentioned before that uh, we had said Texas has been a big play team. And what I guess I, I meant, I know I meant, offensively. But that certainly had to qualify for a big, big play. And I don't think they care whether it was offense or defense. They've got the ball now. Second and eight. Edwin Simmons. Inside the 30. Well, they, they're trusting him an awful lot with the football. And he is delivering and churning up four and five just about every time he touches the ball. He's closing in on the century mark right now. 16 carries as Edward Simmons for 86 yards. And there was a lot of hope on the part of Texas officials that maybe Simmons was ready to make his comeback. This would be a great day for him to do it. He's had that kind of day so far. 4.25 to go. Third and four. Uh-uh. Brett Stafford tried the keeper. And he gets hauled down by Otis Lloyd, number 36. And again, that defense of Arkansas comes up with a big play when they need it. 
remember, Texas still has not scored a touchdown in what is approaching eight quarters. It's seven now, and change. It's uh, 423 to Jeff go in the Ward fourth. tries for field goal number six. He already has the school record with five. This will be a 44-yarder. He's already had a 55-yarder in the game. It's long enough for sure. No good. Jeff Ward misses for the first time in the game. Finishes. Kemper, at least for Arkansas, they don't have to worry now that that fumble really hurt them more than it could have. You figure you get Jeff Ward in that close, he's going to knock it up there for you for three. But after the fumble, Texas took it there, and now Arkansas has got the ball back at the 27. Cal Cagney still in the game. Clock is running at four minutes to go. A couple of changes for the Razorbacks. One of them may be on the receiving end of the next pass thrown. Donnie Centers, number one. Sammy Van Dyke, number 21, will also be in the backfield. Part of the wishbone formation being set up by Cal Cagney. Third and second and seventh. Did he catch it? No. Oh, was that close. Bobby Joe Edmonds had it on his fingertips. Great individual effort here as Bobby Joe Edmonds flies through the air, attempting to make a leaping fingertip catch of a pass from Cal Cagney. Looks like it made contact with the ground. It could have been either way. It was a remarkable catch, but it may have made a little bit of contact with the ground in there, and that would rule it illegal. Watch it again. Very questionable. First missed pass by Cal Cagney. He didn't miss that one. James Shebest, number 25. And Shebest doesn't miss many either. Cal Cagney now three of four in the passing department. That's a big first down for the Hawks. Carl Miller and James Rouse enter the game for Arkansas. Big third down catch for Shebest. I wonder what Greg Horn is thinking right now. Well, we're going to see what he's made of, maybe. This hog march now out to the 39-yard line. Cal Cagney for Rouse. He's got some, and he's got some more across the 50 and into Texas territory. One of the things Ken Hatfield told us yesterday is that James Rouse is very mature for a freshman. He runs with a lot of authority. Watch this. He breaks the tackle there. Another tackle there. Surges forward for the valuable first down yardage. 78 yards now for Rouse. 12 carries, 11 yards on that last one. He got the 11 yards because of great blocks by Theo Young and Carl Miller. Miller number 30, Theo Young number 87. Time is winding down. And Arkansas wants a timeout. Well, these could be big selections. The next few that Coach Hatfield has to make. Two minutes, 28 seconds on the scoreboard here in Fayetteville. And the home team trails by two. Trying to move up the field and get Greg Horn within range. He's missed three times from field goals as Arkansas trails by two. Texas 15-13. Cal Cagney's going to keep it to the 42. Mark Cal Cagney off the bench filling in for Greg Thomas, who became ineffective in the second half. All of Texas's 15 points off the foot of Jeff Ward. Five field goals to set a Texas record. 
So Ken Hatfield, who has been influenced by people like Dick, Doug Dickey and Frank Royal, made a key substitution. Still out of the wishbone. Cal Cagney for Bobby Joe Edmonds. Now time becomes so important. Well, now this measurement may become so important. Now well, they'll measure it at the 41. Two timeouts left for the Razorbacks. Well, we've told you about the memories of 69 and of 81. In a few years, we may be talking about the comeback of 85. We'll know in a short time. Rouse, second effort, doesn't get him what he needed. I think if they mark it, if they give him his first mark, he may have it. I don't know. So they'll measure. There are some dejected-looking Razorbacks on the field right now with 1.12 to go. Well, you've heard the cliche, a game of inches. Look at this. who does not run like a freshman comes up with a big play on fourth down. Hatfield told us yesterday he doesn't know he's a freshman. That's right. 65 seconds to go. The ball on the 39. I really believe, Cooper, they're going to have to get Greg Horn much closer than this. First and ten. Fumble! Fumble. Well, you knew that ball was loose in stereo from up here. Now they've got to call timeout, and they've got to go downtown. No more running. They've got to throw the ball now. The handoff was intended for Rouse. He really never had it because Steve Llewellyn, number 93, watch it here, cracked him. That cracked him good. Watch how quickly number 93, Llewellyn, gets into the backfield. He's there before Rouse even gets on track. Cal, Cal Cagney is the one who gets back on top of the football. Oh, boy. Getting warmed up. Number 11, Greg Horn. 46 seconds to go. Remember, he has missed three. He is still on the sidelines in a second and 16. Texas, an underdog by nine. With 46 seconds to go, they're a leader by two. One kick could turn goat horns into a hero shirt, though, in a hurry. They're standing by right now to light the tower in Austin, Texas, on the campus of Texas. That's a tradition after victories. Flip that switch yet. Fred Akers, he knows what winning is about. Turned the program around at the University of Wyoming before replacing Darrell Royal at Texas and has been a winner here. Arkansas placing their hands, their future in the hands of Cal Cagney. He gets one out to number 82, Luther Franklin. Uh-oh, the clock is still running. He didn't get out. Now 35. they've got to hurry. Now they've got to hurry. Now it's a race against time. 30 seconds. And they call timeout with 28 seconds to go. I was going to say Arkansas placing their future in the hands of Mark Calcagney. Who doesn't know what pressure like this is all about? They lost a lot of time because he didn't exactly know to spin around and call the tee. I guess they lost seven, eight seconds there. And finally, the call for the timeout came from the sideline. Greg Horn, who I would believe eventually attempt this field goal for Arkansas, has a best kick mark of 48 yards. In high school, he has kicked from 50, but he hasn't done it yet for Arkansas. He may have to think back to his high school days this afternoon for his university. It's been a great game. Great working with you. Congratulations on your debut as an ABC play-by-play -play man. Thank you. Great job. The game to open up on, huh? Not too shabby. It could have been Iowa, Iowa State 57-3, <laughs> and we would have been in big trouble. 
Ball at the 40. Cal Cagney. Oh, he's looking to the air. And in trouble. Gets free. Let's it go. Picked off at the 21-yard line. John Hagee with his third big defensive play of the game. Pressure applied by Blake Brunner, number 85, is what forced Cal Cagney to throw the ball into coverage. Watch the pressure now by number 85, Blake Brunner. See that? Now Cal Cagney has to slide forward. He's under duress right there. He throws back across his body. And it's John Hagee, number 17, who steps in front of the intended receiver. That was Bobby Joe Edmonds, number 41, along the left sideline. Hagee coming up with a key play again. He has come up with three big plays defensively today for the Longhorns. Inexperience on the part of Cal Cagney there, throwing the ball across his body, results in an interception. Well, in 1981, it was Texas that came in, top ranked and undefeated, and Arkansas took it to them. And Texas went away with nothing. And today in Fayetteville, it was Arkansas, undefeated, and certainly up near the top in our country. And they'll walk home with a big loss behind them. Texas 15, Arkansas 13. The upset is complete here at Razorback Stadium. Well, what went wrong for Ken Hatfield today? We know what went right for this man, three, Jeff Ward. Three key field goals missed by Greg Orn. Other than that, it was pretty much of a textbook game plan. He said that he wanted to have balance between his running and his passing game. He wanted to eliminate turnovers. He was able to do that. There was only one turnover for each team. So both coaches had the, the plan, and things went according to plan. But three missed field goals on the part of Greg Horn gave Texas a 15-13 victory in one of the classic games of this incredible series. But Cooper, I wonder now, does Fred Akers have to worry about his offense? They still haven't scored a touchdown in eight quarters of football. They are moving the ball pretty effectively, so it's just a matter now of tying some loose ends together. And I think that they showed today that they could move the football, and the fact that Edwin Simmons came back today and was so effective at his tailback position got to give Texas a shot in the arm. All right, they're playing the lead song in Austin, Texas. Light that tower down there. It's 15-13. Texas is a winner. That's the final score in Fayetteville.